Welcome to Electra Online. So let's take a closer look at the southern polar cap of Mars. Now it turns out that here we have a nice little picture of the southern polar cap and I try to draw that same picture over here. See the likeness of the two? Uh, not really, but close enough, I guess. And it turns out that the size of the permanent polar cap on the southern polar cap is much smaller than the one in the north. It's only about 350 kilometers across but it's about three kilometers thick. I don't think I wrote that somewhere, so it's about three kilometers thick. And because of that, the average thickness is much greater at the southern hemisphere compared to the northern hemisphere polar cap, that the ice contained within the polar cap is about the same for the northern, summer, northern cap as it is for the sun cap. So it also contains about 1.6 million cubic meters. Cubic kilometers, not meters, kilometers. So there's an enormous amount of ice contained in the southern polar cap as well. Combined with the two polar caps, you could cover all of Mars with about 22 meters, which is about 76 feet of water for the entire planet if both polar caps were to completely melt. Of course, because of the lack of atmosphere, you couldn't have liquid water on the surface and would simply boil away into the atmosphere. Now, in the winter time, because the winter is so much colder and lasts so much longer when the Sun Hemisphere has its winter, the total size of the polar cap grows tremendously to a radius, not radius, but a diameter of about 4,000 kilometers. So from a small little permanent cap, it grows enormously in size. And this whole region then is covered by about a meter or up to a meter of carbon dioxide. But what makes a difference between the southern polar cap and northern polar cap is that the southern polar cap is completely covered in a permanent layer of carbon dioxide. And because of that, it was always believed that the northern, the northern polar cap had water ice in it, but the southern polar cap was completely made out of carbon dioxide ice. But that's not the case. That layer is only about 8 meters thick. 8 meters would be about 25, 26 feet thick. And it's, what's interesting about it that it's pockmarked with pits or holes. In some areas, the carbon dioxide is completely gone and you have these eight meter deep holes so that the bare water ice is exposed because of that lack of carbon dioxide. Now it turns out that those pits are about size-wise about 200 to 1,000 meters in diameter. And in general, they are growing from year to year by about one to three meters. So very slowly over time, that carbon dioxide ice, that eight meter thick permanent sheet of ice on top of the water ice, appears to be slowly disappearing. Now, of course, that could take a while. It may just be a temporary thing. Maybe they're having a global warming thing on the surface of Mars as well. That's slowly making the ice disappear. Is it permanent? Is it temporary? We don't know. We'll have to wait and see. What, what it does in the future. Temperature-wise, the temperature of the ice is about less than 150 Kelvin in the wintertime, but notice in the summertime, the temperature of the ice doesn't change. It stays at about 150 K below, or 150 K, which means about 120 degrees Celsius below zero. The same thing happens at the southern polar cap, and even more so at the northern polar cap, when all this carbon dioxide ice begins to sublimate, and the temperature begins to get higher when the air temperature uh, increases, we begin to experience these enormously powerful winds again. They're called the Catabaca, or what is, what's it called? I always forget the name. I had to write it down somewhere. Uh, where did it go? Where did it go? There we go, Catabatic. I always have a problems pronouncing that word, Catabatic winds. It's kind of an interesting name. The same kind of winds that we have on Earth at the Antarctic that cause these very powerful, very fast winds moving at very high velocities. But on Mars, these velocities, these winds can reach 400 kilometers per hour, 250 miles per hour on the southern polar cap. So those winds, they spread out from the polar cap, so they drop down because of the high differenti differential between the higher elevation ice and the lower elevation ground around it, that the winds come off and cause enormous amount of dust and sand to be kicked up. And every year in the springtime when the air temperature increases and those winds begin to blow, it kicks up enormous amount of dust around the polar cap and that dust can envelop, envelop the entire planet. So those huge, huge dust storms that sometimes obscure the entire planet, when you try to take pictures of the planet, you can't, it's completely obscured by this dust storm, is caused by the 
change of the of the weather from the winter time in the southern hemisphere to the springtime the winds kick up and they kept all the dust and envelop the entire planet it's in a very interesting situation it appears to happen every single springtime some day some years are worse or some mars years are worse than others those storms last for as much as six months the dust storms can just keep on going and then slowly things begin to subside and the dust begins to settle and the atmosphere clears out of all the dust and the sand and everything goes back to normal. And that is part of the reason why the entire planet is covered by this thick layer of dust and sand everywhere you look because of these huge dust storms. And of course all that dust that then settles to the surface also contains a fair amount of rust, iron oxide, and because of that it gives the entire planet this reddish color and that of course gets distributed on a yearly basis of course we talk about mars yearly basis that's almost two years for the earth and slowly cover the entire planet every single springtime when those winds rush out and kick all the dust and sand up into the atmosphere it's an interesting process and that's why mars looks the way it does today is there a reason why the dust won't last so long why does the dust storm last so long uh, there's two reasons for that one of the reasons is that the winds will last for several weeks to several months and then secondly the particles that go into the atmosphere are so small and so tiny that it takes a very long time for those particles to settle down and come back down to the to the surface so it's a simply a process where it takes several weeks to a month or two before all everything gets covered up and then slowly it begins to dissipate so the winds will die down but then it lasts another two, three, four months before all this, the dust has settled back down to the surface of Mars.